If you're a songwriter, composer, producer, or beat maker, or really anyone that's releasing music online, the only way to collect your performance royalties and your publishing royalties is by registering your music with the Performing Rights Organization, also called PRO. Now, these two types of royalties, they're confused all the time. And if I had a nickel for every time someone asked me, is DistroKid my publisher? Or do I put CD Baby as my publisher when registering a song? I think I'd have enough money to buy Taylor Swift's catalog back from Scooter Braun because there's a lot of misconceptions on this. So please do me a favor and watch all the way through this video. And we'll also compare and contrast the differences between ASCAP and BMI so you can make the best decision for your music. Hey friend, this is Ryan from the Indie Music Academy and welcome back to the channel where we tackle the mysteries of the music industry, learn how to build a larger fan base and grow an income from our music. Today we're gonna to talk about ASCAP and BMI and just a brief overview, they are both performing rights organizations. Now performing rights organizations are entities that collect music royalties on your behalf and they're actually the only ones that can collect those music royalties for you. DistroKid, CD Baby, TuneCore, all of those, they're actually examples of distributors and yes, they get your music onto Spotify, they get your music on Amazon Music and Apple Music, but they don't collect all your royalties. In fact, they mostly handle the mechanical royalties, which are just another one of the music royalties that are generated through the use of your music. I'm actually not talking about those today. I'm talking about public performance royalties that are generated through radio play, they're generated when your music's played on television or at a restaurant or it's used in a film, okay? Those are public performance royalties that are collected by ASCAP and BMI. Now, ASCAP and BMI are both non profit organizations. ASCAP stands for the American Society of Composers, Authors, and Publishers, and BMI stands for Broadcast Music Incorporated. They both have a long history of being involved in the music industry and in the legislation behind how royalties are collected and how a royalty is earned. If you're interested in learning more about that, go ahead and click the link and you can watch a video that I filmed a while ago all about that right here. But instead, in this video, I want to talk about the differences between BMI and ASCAP and which one is better for you. So going back to the names, there's kind of a dichotomy there. BMI is more focused on broadcast and ASCAP is a little more focused on composers and on musicians. Historically, today, they're almost identical, but if you care about the nuances between the two, BMI is a bit more geared towards collecting royalties for broadcast. And we're talking television, we're talking movies, and we're talking radio. ASCAP, on the other hand, is a little more geared towards composers and publishers. And I'm talking about publishing sheet music, publishing classical music, publishing for band and orchestra. That's how it is historically. But today, both do a great job of everything. So if you're wondering, is one gonna cover me where the other won't. Don't worry about that. They're all going to cover you pretty much equally. And the royalty payments, as far as I understand, are pretty similar because they're both monitoring the entire music industry. And it's all set up by the U.S. law. So they can't decide to just run off and do whatever they want. There's legislation involved that decides the parameters of all the PROs and what they can do and how they operate. Again, ASCAP and BMI are both nonprofit organizations in collaboration with the government. So you're in good hands either way in that regard. Now let's talk about one major difference between ASCAP and BMI and that's the percentage system that they use when calculating music splits. ASCAP uses a 100% scale and that's pretty interesting because there's actually two types of royalties but the way that ASCAP thinks about this is that it's all a part of a 100% pie and 50% of that pie is publishing and the other 50% of that pie is songwriting. Okay so that's what makes the 100%. BMI is a little bit different in how they think about this. It's all the same royalty, it's the same money but the way that they'd split it up is with a 200% system. Basically, they're taking the publishing and they're saying there's 100% of a publishing royalty over here. And then they're taking the songwriting royalty and they're saying that's another 100%. And they're putting that together and they're saying the whole royalty that we're gonna collect is out of 200%, which is pretty interesting. And I've had to get used to that as a BMI artist myself. So for example, if you are a self-published artist, you're a singer-songwriter, and you don't have a publishing deal, you're not gonna get distro kid or you're not gonna get give CD Baby your publishing because they don't deserve it. They're just a distributor. I just had to get that out. That's a common question. What you have to do is you have to put 100% of that royalty into the songwriting portion and you're going to give 0% into the publishing because you're self-published. You don't have to give any away to a publishing company. The same way you would do that in BMI, if you're a self-published independent artist with no signed deals, you're not signed to a record label, you're not signed to a music publisher, what you would do is you would give 200% to yourself in the songwriting category and put 0 
0% in the publishing category. So that's the difference. Giving yourself everything on ASCAP is 100%. Giving yourself everything on BMI is giving yourself 200%. And that's just the percentage system that they use. That's how they think about it. And if you're going back and forth between the two, you just have to memorize that difference and you have to know your domain. And you have to know exactly what you're dealing with so you can get it right and not accidentally give yourself half of the royalties you deserve if you're a BMI artist and you didn't realize that it's out of a 200% system. Okay, now that we've tackled the differences in percentage systems, let's talk about something that's actually similar with ASCAP and BMI, but it's completely different than the way that you're probably used to royalties being collected on DistroKid and on CD Baby and your distributors. ASCAP and BMI, they don't collect royalties on a one-to-one -one basis. Now, what does that mean? Think about this. When you stream a song on Spotify and you look into your distributor and you see the statements, you're gonna see a lot of lines. You're gonna see a lot of calculations and a lot of micro sense that it's calculating based on all the activity that you're getting on your streaming platform. ASCAP and BMI don't really work like that. It's not on a stream per royalty basis like your distributor is. It's not one-to-one. -one. It's really more of an estimation. Now, the way that ASCAP and BMI collect money to begin with is through what's called a blanket license. Companies that want to use music for their business, whether it's a restaurant, whether it's a production company, whatever, they can pay for a blanket license to use whatever music they want. And all they have to do is report the usage. That's how radio stations work. They get to play whatever music they want on the radio, whatever today's hot hits are, and they just have to report what their usage is. They've already paid for all of the royalties in advance through that blanket license. So ASCAP and BMI, they take all the money from the blanket licenses they're collecting, and at the end of each payment quarter, they distribute a percentage of those blanket licenses based off of the popularity of the songs that were being used in that quarter. It's an estimation. It's not an exact calculation based off of streams. It's not an exact calculation based off of performances. It's an estimate. And basically, if you are a really huge artist and you take a large percentage of the music market, say if you're the Taylor Swift of the world, or if you're Shawn Mendes or Selena Gomez and you are dominating music, you're actually going to dominate most of the money from these blanket licenses. And the little guys, the little independent artists like you and me that aren't even making a blip on the radar, we're not really going to see so much of that money from ASCAP and BMI because again, it's not a one-to-one -one royalty calculation. Let's be honest with ourselves. We're probably not coming up in radio play a lot. We're probably not even getting noticed by these massive music surveys that they put out to kind of gauge who's popular in the music industry and who to pay out the royalty to. We're probably not coming up at all. The biggest and most likely route that you have to actually make a royalty from ASCAP and BMI is actually by getting on a cue sheet, by getting your music used on television or in a movie and the music supervisor has to submit a cue sheet to ASCAP and BMI. And so that is like a direct submission to the PRO that has your name and your song on it and your performer rights organization number where you can actually move the needle a little bit and you can actually get a pretty huge royalty for that. Other than that, I would not expect to be getting that many royalties from ASCAP and BMI as an independent artist, unless if you're doing major tours or getting major radio play, because that's just how the music industry is set up. You're much better off utilizing other monetization methods, like I talk about in my course, like monetizing your email list, doing collabs, selling services, like selling music production. You're gonna make way more money doing that kind of stuff than signing up on BMI and hoping that you're gonna get a music royalty from your Spotify. It's just not gonna happen, guys the music royalty system is not set up like that. All right, so after that depressing moment, let's end on the lighter side and talk about the cost of signing up for each. Now, the cost of ASCAP is 50 bucks to register as a songwriter. And the difference there is that BMI is actually free. It's $0 to register your music as a songwriter and you can start collecting royalties immediately. However, if you wanna register as a publisher as well, which you don't have to, it's not mandatory, but if you wanna register yourself as a publisher and collect publishing on other people's music, like if you're a producer and they can't pay you, so you're gonna take a little bit of the publishing or something like that. Whatever you wanna do, it's your contract, you decide. But the difference here is that ASCAP also costs 50 bucks to register as a publisher. BMI costs up to 150 bucks to register as a publisher. So which one is more expensive? Actually, ASCAP is cheaper if you're gonna go the full route. But if you wanna register just as a songwriter, BMI is the cheapest, you can't beat free. And once again, if you are just a solo artist, you're not going to set up your own publishing company. You don't have to take publishing from other songs that you didn't actually write. It's not going to be a side business for you. You're just taking care of your own music. Then 
what you can do is you could sign up to BMI absolutely free, put 200% of the collection into the songwriting category, and BMI will send you the songwriting and publishing royalties, even if you're just signed up as a songwriter. So that's a great thing that BMI does. ASCAP does that too, but BMI is totally free. I'm a BMI artist. I can only speak to BMI in my past experience, so that's what I'm gonna recommend. And yeah, after you guys register as a songwriter on BMI and you need help registering your songs, I've already made a guide for you on this channel right here that you could click on and follow along as I register a song. If you decided to register as a publisher as well and you need help with that, I made another guide that I'm also going to link right here. And lastly, when you're registering your music, do not put your distributor as the publisher. I know I already said that a bunch in this video, but it's like my most frequent comment in my BMI registration video. And I just can't imagine how many people are missing out on royalties because they're putting DistroKid as their publisher. DistroKid is not a publisher, guys. And actually, if you're confused about music royalties in general, I highly recommend you download my music royalty collection guide. It's an ebook that I made completely free and I'll make that link available to you in the description below. It's a totally free download and it's quite in depth. So if you wanna learn about all all of the music royalties that you can collect more than just on BMI and ASCAP, but I'm talking mechanical royalties. I'm talking sync licensing royalties. I'm talking royalties from Sound Exchange, which is not interactive streaming royalties. If you don't know about any of that, you need to download this guide and learn about the industry that you're in and learn how to collect all the royalties that are owed to you from the usage of your music. So with that guys, thanks so much for watching this video. If this was helpful to you, go ahead and hit that like button and leave a comment if you have any questions. I'm here to help you guys. So leave a comment below and of course hit subscribe and the notification bell because if you don't hit that notification bell you won't get notified when a new video comes out that's not how YouTube works so you got to hit that bell oh and don't forget about the free giveaway that's going on right now it's a limited time but I'm gonna roll a video to explain all about it so stay tuned and learn about the free giveaway happening right now and I'll see you guys in a future video Hey, what's up guys? This is Time Traveling Ryan, where I had to skip on over to this video to let you know about our current contest and how to win a free microphone. So let me tell you the details about that and how to enter. As long as you're watching this video before Christmas Eve 2019, you still have a chance to answer to win a high quality USB condenser microphone along with a content creator's bundle kit so that you finally have the tools that you need to grow your audience and spread your message by creating consistent content like we always talk about on this channel. Entering the contest is super easy. Just click the link in the description below and there's no purchase necessary to enter. All you have to do is follow the instructions on the next page and it's that simple. So pause this video right now. Don't worry, I'll wait for you and head on over and put in as many entries as you can. And here's a pro tip. There is a way to get unlimited entries by inviting your friends and having them sign up as well. And here's the cool thing, you have a better chance of winning and they can even win too because there are runner up prizes as well. So good luck guys, have fun, and I'll see you guys in the future.